The video released by the Russian Defense Ministry on February 3rd was filmed in the Leningrad region of northwestern Russia. Images from the video show the T-90M core of main battle tank firing while in motion, as well as when standing still. The Russian Ministry of Defense has released a video of the main battle tank T-90M Prorov rehearsing firing at the training ground. According to the announcement of the Russian Ministry of Defense, T-90M Prorov practiced hitting targets at a distance of up to 5,000 meters. These targets simulate enemy armor, soldiers, and aircraft. The exercise also tested the crew's skills in overcoming obstacles in maintaining and transporting tanks. The T-90M Prorov is a powerful improved version of the Russian main battle tank T-90, equipped with a completely new turret and a more powerful engine. Prorov is also equipped with a new aiming system that allows the weapon to be used at any time of the day. One advantage of the T-90M is that it can share data with other vehicles in real time. The T-90M tank is significantly superior to the T-90 by its combat effectiveness while retaining the advantages of the previous model. T-90M Prorov 3 uses a powerful diesel engine, allowing it to travel at a speed of 72 km hour. The T-90M is also equipped with advanced reactive armor layers called Relic. T-90M is equipped with the Stora M defense system, which effectively protects against the opponent's guided anti-tank missiles in the context of Western anti-tank missiles, causing many challenges for the equipment. Russia in recent times. The fact that Russia has brought the T-90M to the battlefield in Ukraine in the past time has helped Moscow gain a great advantage. Thanks to its reliable defensive capabilities and modern fire control system, the T-90M has caused a lot of damage to the enemy. The Russian army received a new batch of T-90M breakthrough tanks from the Ural Vagonzavod factory on January 12, where assembly lines have reportedly been working around the clock to accelerate production amid the ongoing war effort in Ukraine. Ural Vagonzavod, part of UV's group, has successfully fulfilled its next contract for the delivery of T-90M Prorov tanks. The armor batch has already been sent to the Defense Ministry of Russia, UV's announced. Russian Deputy Prime Minister and Industry and Trade Minister Denis Mancharov elaborated that the vehicles integrated a new turret, next-generation explosive reactive armor, a new main gun, superior communications systems and a more powerful engine, adding that they are outfitted with advanced equipment that helps the tank crew effectively strike targets. UVS has fulfilled the defense procurement plan on time. The last T-90M batch was delivered to the Russian army five months prior in August, with UVS during the Soviet era having been capable of producing over 1,000 similarly sized vehicles per year. Formerly one of five tank factories in the USSR, UZV today is the sole tank producer in Russia and has been manufacturing armor on a fraction of the scale it did before 1992. Expansion of production and a much greater focus on producing for domestic use could allow the Russian army to receive several hundred T-90 MIGs by the end of 2022, potentially bringing numbers close to 800 should heavy losses in combat be avoided. UZV has been producing primarily for export over the past three decades and is by far the largest tank producer in the world, with more output than all the world's other tank factories combined excluding those in China and North Korea. The T-90M itself is one of two Russian tank classes in production alongside the much more modern T-14 Armada, which although over 100 have been produced, has yet to enter service in the Russian army. With the T-14 also produced at UZV, the possibility remains that production could be suspended or slowed down to prioritize more T-90M deliveries, with this likely depending on how cost-effective both are considered to be and how ready the T-14 is for entry into service. The T-90M first entered service in April 2020, after testing was completed two months prior, and represented a revolutionary improvement over prior T-90 variants, making it by far the most capable tank in Russian service. Notable features include use of Afghanid active protection system and relict explosive reactive armor, addition of extra armor, isolating the tank's ammunition internally, and integration of the new 2A46 M5 gun and Kalina fire control system, providing compatibility with a wide range of new munition types.
the new T-90 variant was previously considered to be at least on par with the most capable NATO tanks, although Polish contracts signed in 2022 for several hundred cutting-edge K-2 tanks from South Korea, and a T-90 MS capture in Ukraine and inevitable study by Western militaries have served to undermine this position. With Russia's older T-72B3 tanks which currently make up the bulk of its tank units, having proven vulnerable against NATO's latest anti-tank missile classes, significant investment is expected to equip more units, with the T-90M, a newly developed T-72 variant, has also been seen borrowing many armor features from the T-90M and could potentially partly bridge the gap in survivability and complement the new T-90 deliveries. It is expected that work to modernize over 400 older Russian T-90s to the T-90M standard will also be accelerated due to the circumstances of the war in Ukraine. It remains uncertain how the Russian-Ukrainian war and accompanying rise in tension with NATO will impact the T-90M program with much likely depending on how Russia assesses the performance of its current armored units, based primarily around T-72B3B3M progress on the T-14 program, and the tank's affordability in terms of both its acquisition and its operational costs, will also be a factor, as will the sustainment of high oil prices, which have increased Russian state revenues considerably. Although the T-90M was long seen to provide parity with the most capable tanks in NATO, with alliance members other than Britain all dependent on tank designs from the early 1980s or late 1970s, such as the Leopard 2 or M1 Abrams, moves by Poland and Turkey to acquire more capable vehicles from South Korea in very large numbers, has led to the possibility of a very steep Russian disadvantage should it fail to invest in the T-14. Turkish plans to acquire close to 1,000 Atle tanks, a derivative of the South Korean K-2 built under license, and Polish plans to also acquire close to 1,000 K-2s and order more capable K-3 tanks in future, represents the leading threat to Russian armor superiority, with further sales of the advanced Korean vehicles to NATO states remaining highly possible. The K-2 and T-14 are currently considered effectively in a league of their own in terms of performance, and the Korean tanks deployment in Poland in particular may well influence assessments of the future viability of the T-90M.